So this is it. My DIY laser project is finally finished, the SP3624 as I've dubbed it. And in this video, I just wanted to kind of wrap up with a couple of extra features that I haven't talked about so far and do a final assessment to find out if all of this pain and suffering was really worth it. So let's get started. How's it going everybody? Steve here, welcome back. And as I mentioned, the SP3624 DIY laser project, it's up and running. I've actually used it for a couple of commercial projects already. Now there's a couple of things I didn't talk about much in previous videos. The first one is the outer shell, the skin of the laser. When you build this, basically what you end up with is an aluminum frame with a laser tube in it. And that's, aside from being unsafe, is also uh, gonna prevent you from safely evacuating fumes off of the projects you're cutting uh, to the outside. So what you need to do is put some skin on the, on the laser. And what I used was clear acrylic, clear because it's cheaper than colored. And uh, I cut all the pieces out on this laser. And the way I did that was I rolled my laser over to the, the garage door in my shop opened it up and started cutting so that I had good ventilation. And as I cut them off, I painted the inside of them. And when it was dry, I mounted them on the laser. So eventually I got the cabinet closed in. Now you don't have to use acrylic or clear acrylic. You could use uh, MDF, eighth inch MDF, which is really cheap. You could use Coroplast. There, there's just a number of materials. You know, don't use cardboard because it's flammable. But if you, if you don't have the option of taking your laser to the outside or, or close to the outside, you might wanna just cover in all the dangerous pieces with cardboard so that you can at least get a bit of uh, suction from the ventilation fan to get your fumes out. And then as you cut pieces, you can just start closing the laser in uh, more and more and replacing you know, whatever temporary covering you have. So do, do it that way. Uh, anyway, the, the next feature I kind of put in, and it was kind of a last minute thing, I did mount a camera on the inside of the lid. Now, it's, it's the camera that Lightburn provides, and I used a 66 millimeter uh, lens, I guess. I think, I think it was 66, uh, and it works okay, although it's not nearly as nice as, say, the camera on the Muse 3D. Uh, on the plus side, it, it can capture the workspace much quicker. It's literally a snapshot, but it's not as nice. Anyway, it's there. Now, it does require direct plug-in to USB on the computer where you're running Lightburn, which for me is a bit of an inconvenience because the rest of the laser function runs on Ethernet. Uh, but if you are running on USB anyway, uh, you know, consider the camera. I mean, I'll use it for crucial things, but it's probably not gonna get a lot of use. Uh, anyway, that's kind of the last two features to talk about. Now, when I started this, I set out a couple of goals. The first one was, you know, to find out if I could actually build one of these. And of course the answer is yes, uh, because it works. Uh, I, I wasn't sure right up to the last minute and keep in mind when you're unsure about something, dropping several hundred dollars for a tube and, and, and you know, an equal amount almost for a chiller, it's a bit nerve wracking until you see the first shot coming out of the laser and, and maybe cutting something out. So it is a bit of a nail biter, but uh, you know, I was able to pull it out uh, next question I had was around the price. Uh, when I looked at, at 100 watt, 90 watt lasers, they were all in the eight to $10,000 range. And I thought that was a bit crazy given that the only real difference between that laser and any other CO2 laser is the tube. And the tube honestly isn't thousands of dollars, it's hundreds of dollars. So I didn't really understand. And that was when, when I started thinking I could just build one cheaper. So. In the end, I built it for probably half the cost of the commercial one. Now, I could have built it even cheaper, but I didn't want to cheap out on things, particularly things like the optics and the linear rails. The optics, I bought the best optics I could and the best optic mounts I could find, the best mirror mounts, which were the cloud ray ones. Uh, they have really nice adjusters on them. Uh, on the uh, linear rail side, I didn't opt for uh, for high wind rails, which would have been hundreds of dollars each. So I didn't go completely crazy, but I did, I did go for kind of the next rung down on that quality scale and bought the high end ones from, uh, from China. 
and they work really well. I mean, we're not looking for, for like, you don't need the kind of precision you'd need on a 3D printer, for example, but they, they are, they're, they're pretty solid, solid rails and I'm glad I spent the extra money. So, you know, don't cheap out on those, on those mainline components. Uh, same with things like the chiller, the fans, uh, they're all high end, the high, you know, decent high end fans. Anyway, so that's kind of the project. It's wound down, it works really well, and I'm happy I have it. It works even better than I thought it was going to. I was unsure, as I said, uh, but I'm surprised at, at how good it actually is. So, uh, hopefully, you got something out of this series, and uh, maybe you're going to build your own laser. If that's the case, I did mention I'll make all of the plans and parts and I'll try and put some assembly, uh, at least visuals together to show you how, how I put this together. It won't be comp comprehensive. You'll have to use your imagination in a couple of places, but if you get stuck uh, building one of these, uh, you know, you can just shoot me an email. Anyway, I'll load all of this stuff up somewhere and I'll put links out. Uh, probably on the community tab on my YouTube page, as well as uh, I'll update the description of all these videos so that you know where to find them. Anyway, get, get out there and consider making one and uh, go make your world and I'll see you next time.